by bit. I will continue with cryptococcosis of the central nervous system, which is the second most common opportunistic infection in patients with HIV after toxoplasmosis. And cryptococcus is a yeast, a fungus, that gives a primary pulmonary infection and then spreads to the subarachnoid space leading to a leptomeningitis. And it extends also in the perivascular spaces leading to this gelatinous pseudocyst. And if you see an immunocompromised patient with a lot of perivascular spaces, you should think of cryptococcus. And as a rule of thumb, normal large perivascular spaces are about three millimeters. And if they're larger, you should think of cryptococcus. And the perivascular spaces also are enlarged along the ventricle and in the infratentorial compartment. In general, the cysts do not enhance. The amount of enhancement depends on the cellular immunity of the host, so sometimes there is some faint enhancement. Cryptococcus infection is diagnosed doing an Indian ink test on the CSF, and then you can see all this cryptococcus. And it looks like a very simple yeast with a membrane, but the membrane contains melanin. And the reason that the cryptococcus thrives so well in the subarachnoid space and in the brain is that there are a lot of metabolites that are useful for this cryptococcus yeast. For example, the neurotransmitters, the catecholamines, can be converted by the cryptococcus in melanin, so they can armor their cell wall and be more resistant to the host's response. Because of the perivascular involvement, you can also get a vasculitis-like pattern with small infarctions, as you can see here on this diffusion weighted and ADC images in the right cerebellar hemisphere. And because of the accumulation of cryptococcus in the paravascular and especially the perivenular spaces, there is stagnation of CSF flow and there is intracranial hypertension. And you can see on MRI high signal in the periventricular white matter on flare or even hydrocephalus and especially the intracranial hypertension is a very poor prognostic factor for patients with a cryptococcus infection and when i was preparing this vlog i also found an article of cryptococcal meningoencephalitis presenting as a psychiatric emergency and it made me think that I've done a lot of vlogs until now. And I thought it might be time to do an intermezzo. So the next vlog will be an intermezzo. And then I will continue with the leukencephalopathy in HIV and the PML.